Game development is probably the thing I still love the most. Don't tell my wife, um, except my wife, exclude my wife, can't save this one, ignore what I said. I love game development and that's really the point in this video. Now the problem is that not everybody can get to grips with programming languages and programming language languages can be difficult and if you have to learn a whole language in order to make games it can be a bit much especially at younger ages. Luckily there are interesting tools these days that can help younger people learn how to do game development and game design and roll into the whole thing that's called game development. And I recently got invited by a local school to check out their uh, class. They actually teach a class where they uh, teach kids how to get into game design, game development and tinker with games in a fun way without using a programming language. Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel. Welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about education, games, how far we've gotten from game development way back when I was younger to now, and a tool called Flow Labs. Let's talk about all those things after the intro. Okay, so I learned programming my first couple of games on a C64, Commodore 64. This isn't one because these keys are fake. This is a C64 Mini that allows you to play the old Commodore Fix 64 games, but you can't really work on it. And it was like this, just a little bit uh, bigger um, and different from all the computers you know now. So learning how to create games back then uh, had to be done, um, well there was no internet, so I had to grab listings from magazines, um, they had magazines paper and they would print out listings for games you could type them in it would take you maybe an hour to type all those lines in hopefully you made no error or mistakes because then it would take you even much longer to figure out why it wasn't running if you got it up and running you could tinker with the numbers and the values and the things and hopefully learn a little bit from it and then of course there were books again paper in a library like a physical building with a lot of books all on paper and there you could um, learn a little bit more. That's how you had to learn the language and then from that language you had to learn how to create games. There were no complete working things for you to implement into your game. You had to figure out everything. How do they move the background? How do they move characters around the screen? How can I create, um, how do I connect this thing to movement on the screen? You just had to figure it out all on your own or find friends. But the problem was, of course, well, not the friends part, but understanding these things and having all the interest to dive into these things, that wasn't for everybody. It was just a lot of work to figure out how to create games. My teachers, those that were teaching the lessons, I always suspected that they were only one lesson ahead of us. So uh, we would get taught lesson one and they would be learning lesson two for themselves so they could teach us that the next week. So not to brag but while everybody including the teacher was trying to learn how to enter your own name and then have it printed out 10,000 times on screen I was creating a top-down racing game with skip marks and all that stuff. I just wasn't learning all these things at school and I would have loved to learn these things and also share these things with friends and talk with friends who would also create their things and then I could play their games and we would all create our own worlds. That just wasn't happening. But luckily things have changed. So when I visited the school a week ago or a little over a week ago, I was pleasantly surprised. They were using a tool called Flow Lab and it allows them to um, make diagrams roughly like how blueprints works in Unreal, they could link things together and have a game playable with a lot of tutorials available, a lot of examples. Of course on itch.io you can download free sprite packs so they have all the graphics going, they have all the code examples. So Flow Lab was originally created by Ken Rayleigh for his kids. He wanted to teach them a game flow and how things work and behave and how you slowly build games. And uh, this has grown to a huge platform, apparently. I never really heard of this at all, I think. Um, but it's cool. It can run in your browser. You can just build games in the browser. All the tools are there. Pixel art or graphics can be created in there. And you can share the links with your friends so they can quickly just play the stuff you created. 
you can apparently export to Steam or well to Windows, to Android, iOS, so that Steam and the App Store, Google Play, all those things, you can export these games and there are some cool stuff and cool games made here already. There's a huge community and from what I experienced in the classroom, this is pretty cool stuff for education. And there's a bunch of games on here playable in a browser, which is perfect, obviously. Enter to continue, let's go, blah, blah. Sorry, I don't like to read text. I just like to try stuff and then complain about things that I should have read about. Oh, okay, we're in 3D, like, yeah, nice. Let's go for a key, key required to open. We have a key. Um, yeah, 3D games, apparently that's also possible. Oh, and now we're actually in the editor, I guess, like that. Uh, let's look at something else they have on here. I saw a cool race game on the front screen. Uh, can I play that one? Where's that racing game? Yeah, I like top-down racing games. Let's see if we can play this a little bit. Playing on mobile. No, I'm not. I'm playing on... Uh, apparently, I'm now playing full screen. Not sure how that happened. All right, start. And let's race. So this is pretty cool. I'm still, I still want to create a game like this. But every time when I just try out a couple of these games, I think, um, what could I add to this? What would I have to add to a game like this? This is already pretty cool. This is like, it's simple basics, but also impressive of what has to go into this to make it work. So I'm really impressed with what Flow Lab can create. And if I'm not mistaken, we can press escape and get into the editor for this game. So you can actually edit the game and elements and things. And if I had uh, more time, I would really look into this and see what I could do with it. So it was a lot of fun for me to see how these kids were actually playfully learning how to create these worlds. And they were now sharing their own games with each other and creating games so others could enjoy them. Because as a game developer, you're not really making games for yourself. You're always making games and worlds and setting the rules for other people to enjoy it. Of course, there is a difference here between uh, learning this and actual programming, although tools like Unreal have diagrams like this as well. And I have seen creative people who used blueprints to get very far and get a game up and running. So this might actually be part of the future. You don't have to learn programming languages. You just have to learn how to create these diagrams and flowcharts and make things happen that way. The most interesting thing for me was to see that some of these kids were um, getting it. They were understanding how to create games and how to get a little bit further than everybody else. And of course, there is going to be a difference in level of understanding uh, but it was interesting to see. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the games they were making in the classroom. I got my hands on a couple of them. It's like I'm playing illegal copies of a game now. Um, let's look at these games. All right, first one, Joe Blubber. I've seen this game um, getting made. It's a vertical climbing game. And the guy making this was doing some cool um, and somewhat weird uh, graphics. I hope he's doing okay because th these images were weird. Let's have a play. All right. And um, it's really fairly simple. Jump up and uh, try to reach the top of the level. This first one is, uh, it has weird eyes, but it ha doesn't have ice and things like that. I saw him add those things to the game as well. Probably a later level. Uh, I like how things are moving and you slowly are uh, new things being introduced. Screen shake. That means something's coming from below. Let's see if we can actually get that on screen. I'm guessing it's coming. Oh, there it is. Um, like I said, interesting art and graphics. Um, and I'm now in a situation where I, I got gooped. I'm going to try it again. Um, just want to show you the next level. I should be able to make that. Uh, let me. There's some weird stuff happening when you hit the side of a wall. But I think uh, most of these games ran into that issue. So it should be fixable, I guess, but um, not all games had it fixed yet. So this is going much better. All right, the ice level, I saw him create this one. Um, I like how it slides. You have a little bit of a 
inertia going on. Uh, you just can't go um, full stop. I am trying to avoid and talk and play the game. I'm doing too many things. Um, also like the touch of these breaking and dropping ice thingies. And now I'm I'm now I'm dead. Let's just go there. Another interesting uh, little creature. I also like how this you got iced message. The end or the game over message is different in every level. Um, yeah, there's interesting stuff here. And with Flow Labs, you can just edit this game and check things out and change things. Can I get a look at the other levels? Let me see. Game level. This is, I think, the first one. Well, oh, that's. All right, so you can load different levels. He's, oh, this He's working on a clown as well. Interesting art. Let's just keep it at that. Let's look at the next game. All right, Pixel Bound. I like the logo, but I'm not I haven't seen this game get made, so I'm not sure. Some of them were just using um, assets from itch.io, existing graphics, which is fine. You're going to start somewhere. Oh, I did actually see this game getting made. Um, move space uh one two three four to equip weapons okay i can equip all weapons at once all right how do i shoot i don't know how to shoot i don't know how to shoot and i don't know how to uh, survive and um what's very interesting to me and a part of that is probably that flow lab has certain tutorials but they are learning uh, the basics of game development and ah, they are learning the basics like i used to learn them back in the day with the simple um old school games so to speak uh, it's not here you should create a multiplayer online role-playing game no start with the basics a platformer um left right scrolling parallax scrolling and all those things uh, before you continue on the harder part and games like this are still being made and sold commercially so there's nothing wrong with them and it's just cool to see that the current generation is still learning games and creating games like this because there is just something simple and understandable and relatable about these two-dimensional games and these side scrollers and collecting things and the movement of platforms um, there's just a universal language in these game designs. Now let's look at the final game. Um, I wanted to show this one as well because it just stood out with very different graphics compared to everything else. Um, let's see if we can play the game. It comes with music. Cool. Press enter to start. And uh, alright. And it's, oh, it's going a lot faster than I saw it go a few days ago. Okay, uh, I can do this. I can get I can get all these coins and things, and I can get somewhere. Also, that little blocking uh, problem that the other game has with the platformers. Well, collision detection is a thing that you have to get right um, in games like this, and it's I'm not getting very far. Give me a little bit of time before I rush through the game. Come on, give just slow down this weird slice of cheese or whatever is hunting me. And give me some room. Just that's that's the game design part of it. One thing I want to show about this game. Um, can I get there? I have no idea what I'm doing. This guy. Sprite. Uh, yeah. I was very impressed with the amount of frames I saw in this game. Like, there's a huge amount of animation going on. I mean, it it needs a little bit of improvement, but it's impressive that so many frames are being made for this game. I honestly rarely have this amount of frames for a character. Also, what's going on? Is he a kangaroo? Is there another head coming out? And is that is he like a kangaroo character or something could be um anyway moving on i like how much time has been spent into uh, creating these frames and uh sure it requires a little bit of work but the start is there can i get the cheese thingy i can get the cheese thingy 
Does he have any frames or animation? Now I just now I just want a big string of cheese or something. I guess I'm not gonna edit stuff. I'm not sure if that edits just the copy for me. Saving is locked. Okay, so I can edit it. Can I? This is my first step into Flow Labs myself. Can I just um, make him go slower? Does that work? Let me see. Yeah, that makes him go a lot slower. Okay, so now I can try to get a little bit further. Anyway, um, as you can see, uh, it's just a lot of fun. And imagine this in a classroom where everybody is um, creating games, uh, playing games, learning about games and sharing the games, which is just, uh, I wish I had that when I was still at school. Also, so much cheese monsters. I'm not sure what these teachers are teaching these kids, but there is a lot of, or maybe all these monsters are teachers. Not sure. As some of these kids will learn the fun it brings in being able to create these worlds and creating um, interactive worlds, because I, th I still think that games are like the, the upper level of entertainment. Uh, movies are awesome, books, uh, graphic novels, a lot of awesome stories and settings and, and all these things going on. But in games, you really just set up the rules of the universe and the world and then give it to the player and um, find your own way in it. We will guide you here and there, but it's now your world. Enjoy it, enter it, and we'll prepare the next world for you. So um, yeah, I'm just very enthusiastic about game design, but also education and, and bringing this to kids and, and in schools. Probably because I just didn't have it when I was growing up. So maybe I'm just trying to make up for that. So after seeing all this in the classroom, I reached out to Flow Lab and we decided together to give uh, this local school um, a fun little education. Make sure these kids can continue using Flow Lab for the next couple of years and see um, what they come up with and what they make. And uh, yeah, I was very impressed by, by both Flow Labs, but also the school uh, giving this class to kids. Now, of course, if you're watching this and you think you also want to create games and give it a try, but programming languages are not your thing and your keys also don't work like the way you want them to, check out Flow Lab. They have a free tire where you can try things out. You can create three games, I think, multiple game objects. You can actually dive into it and check out if it's something for you as well. I have seen people that are more into the skill-based things that want to try and create games. And this might actually be a good solution. So if you're an artist or musician or a writer or whatever, check it out. Uh, this could actually help you get your ideas into a game world in a fairly easy way, or at least a different way. If programming is not your thing, check this out. And um, that's it for this week's video. A big shout out to both the school and the teachers uh, allowing me access to uh, check out this classroom, to be part of it, to look into uh, what these kids are creating. Um, also, big shout out to Flow Lab for helping me um, get this school and these kids a great game design education, or at least the experience of creating games. And hopefully, maybe, who knows, they will turn into game developers at some point in the future. And maybe we'll see them on YouTube at some point in the future. Who knows? Now, don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Check out Flow Labs. Um, if you have nothing to comment on this video, but you want to help me get this video noticed by the YouTube algorithm, reply in the comments below. Stop being an idler and just put the word education in the comments below because education is a good thing. Now, this is not a, a stab at Americans or anything, but education is a good thing. See you next week. Bye.